So I've got quite a lot of rubbish going on the uh, desk today. Um, it's because I'm still messing with this Blumen radio uh, and I'm trying to sort out a power supply. We're not going into that today. I had started to use uh, a five volt power supply. God, it's such a mess here. <laughs> right, so one of these uh, five volt power supplies, I think they're like, they're designed for LEDs really. And uh, I got this cool plug, this uh, clear plug and a nice fabric cable. And that's what I wanted to use. However, this won't fit in the blue in case, will it? So um, I found, found, I bought this a while ago. This is uh, a five volt, two amp power supply. Um, so I bought some big old wire, some, what is it? 16 gauge uh, wire. And I hoped that would be uh, appropriate. So I'm gonna be using that hopefully. Um, not doing that today anyway. Um, I'm just, I've pulled this out because I need to borrow the breadboard. Uh, I don't have any more breadboards. I've literally run out. I need to invest some more money in some. But I picked up this, it came from Amazon today. Uh, I picked it up at, for about 15 pounds, I think. It's one of these little e-ink things. Uh, so let's uh, zoom in and focus. There we go. A little e-ink thing from Waveshare. Uh, e-paper display um, and it's SPI driven and it's got one of these little connectors on here the DuPont cable now I was going to use a Wemos one of these little uh, D what are they D1 mini it's just an ESP8266-12 board um, and I finally picked up some that actually work I'll give you a little close-up view of that if I can even though we're quite zoomed in zoomed out yeah so it's a nice board and um, it's detected on my computer which was the problem with the other ones that I had they were cheap ones this one was about four quid so still not expensive but I bought it in the UK from a reputable seller so uh, supporting your businesses in your own country is a good idea too but uh, it meant that if I had problems, I could go back to them and say, hey, a bit of an issue. Anyhow, I need to solder on some, um, whatever these things are called, headers, I guess. Uh, and I need the long ones. Well, I don't need the long ones, but I'd like to be able to use it in a breadboard and be able to plug things on the top. So um, these actually will fit on uh, the ends of these headers. So if I solder these through, it should be all right. And I just need to use this breadboard uh, to make these straight essentially. So which way are we going up? I think I might put the um, the USB on the top side. Uh, so if I just push those in and then we'll put it onto the breadboard. And I've got some of these, um, these pins here to put into my breadboard to put the whole thing in. Right, uh, I don't know what the spacing is on this. I'm gonna assume it's four either side. I can't drag this project over any further onto the mat, unfortunately. So uh, it's a bit frustrating. There we are. Can I? I mean, I could just unplug some stuff. Do you know what? I'll do that. It's only power and ground, and that's my speaker cable. And I'm gonna leave everything else connected. I know it's completely weird that I'm just bringing on this just for the breadboard itself. Let's zoom in again. Focus up a little bit. Um, live focusing is very difficult because I can't zoom in and inspect the individual pixels. So I wanted it to be that way around, didn't I? So let's see if we can't slot it in. Okay, so I'll be able to safely solder that, I think. Probably turn the soldering iron on. Yeah, so this isn't a tutorial by any means. This is just uh, me doing a little bit of soldering and having a chat. So the reason I wanted to pick up one of these little um, e-paper displays, and I bought another one. I haven't got it out yet, but it's a massive, it's basically a lot, it's the big brother of this one. So it's 4.2 inch, something like that. I can't remember exactly, but um, yeah, it's a nice one. There we go, should stop it running around. It's being pulled by cables, so it's gonna move if not. 
Uh, so it's the, I've got the Big Brother as well, and that's a serial-driven display, and this one's uh, driven by SPI. It's a lot slower, the other one. This one should be a bit faster. I think this one refreshes in like a few seconds or something. So it's bank holiday at the moment, which um, means I've been <laughs> drinking way too much, and uh, which is, you know, I'm fine with. That's like a nice little pastime, but I haven't really stopped. <laughs> so... Uh, I'm feeling a little bit worse for wear. So let's just do a little, oops. I'm just gonna hold it down with my finger, I think. Oh, my desk is such a mess. I've got no end of cables all over the place today. It's my fault, obviously. I'm not trying to blame anybody else. There we go, that looks good. Just do the rest of these. I I haven't um, tried this display out before. I've never even seen an e-paper display, so I am very excited to um, to have a little glimpse of it. Ouch, that's warm. Um, I've seen them online, obviously. I think um, Pimeroni is that how you meant to say it? They have this really cool dual color one, which I uh, know. Sorry, dual color. Well, it is dual color. It's black and black and red, but uh, I really, really love the look of that. It's a pie hat that they've got, um, but it is currently out of stock. I think it's being reviewed. So they'll probably do a bit of a hardware revision on it, but it looks really nice and I'd like to pick one up. I'm happy enough with that. Right, now I need to um, figure out where all these pins go. It's probably not, I'm not gonna cover it here unless I have some kind of breakthrough and manage to do it in the next five minutes. So we've got three volts is gonna go there. Black is ground. That's right next to it, isn't it? No, it's not. It is G at the second pin. So what I intend to do with this little display is um, I'd like to do that uh, YouTube subscriber count thing again, um, but also I wanna have a look at doing some little tweet displays maybe as a notifier. This is the, the thing that came on the display when I got it, so I haven't messed around with it at all, that's just what's there. So like some nice little ideas of what you could use it for. Um, if you refreshed it every minute, you could have a clock on it, that would be really useful. You've got um, temperature and stuff on there. That's what I want the, um, the largest display for, is um, gonna be like a weather station slash news thing with some uh, stuff on there, alerts and stuff like that alerts, like I need any alerts or anything. Right, I'm gonna go away and sort this out. And if I manage to get something on the display, you will see it in a second. If not, I'll speak to you all soon. Well, actually, it turns out it's fairly easy to hook this thing up. So um, I'm using a library called GX EPD. So that's, is it good displays? I think that it's a company who makes these modules. It's not Waveshare. Uh, Waveshare's code was a little bit confusing, so I went for this other one, and it links in with the Adafruit, Adafruit GFX library, so um, you can use all of their um, sort of functions as well, which is really nice. So all I've done is, do you remember the sub counter I made a while back? I've taken it apart now because I didn't particularly like the form factor. Anyway, I've reused the code from that, so if I just plug this in, I've got a little power bank here. Uh, you'll have seen a little flash there, hopefully and this thing will kick into life. Uh, it just needs to connect to the network, so once it's done that, it should immediately display something. Fingers crossed, here we go. So it says, this is an e-paper display. It is a fun little device, drum roll, and my subscriber count is 13,141. I don't know whether it's gonna change as it goes through this. Now, uh, so that it didn't have anything on the display when I took the power out, uh, so that I could give you a better reveal. I've got a, a bit in here that uh, just blanks out the display, so you'll see that in a second. So I'll just plug it back in. Yeah, it's really simple. You can use all of the, the text uh, functions that you would use, the cursor position. So it, essentially the Adafruit graphics library creates a frame buffer. So it buffers this whole 200 by 200 pixels, or at least the parts of it you're using. And you can move things around. Uh, you can change the orientation of the screen. I'm sure you've all come across the Adafruit graphics library before. It's really, really useful. And this is, what, a subclass of it, I guess. Um, so it just creates the, the way that you can use the controller in this, um, this module. So 
yeah, really awesome. I'm very pleased. Uh, it updates really quickly, actually. It's a lot quicker than I expected, but it is only a small display. Let's zoom in, shall we, and see if you can see anything. Oh, no, you can't. <laughs> this hasn't got a great zoom on it. Uh, it is in focus, though, and I've just taken that away. There we go. Anyway, yeah, it's really nice. I like it. So I'll put a link in the description where I got it. I will be using this more in the future. So right now I'm just showing you that I've got it, but um, I'm gonna 3D print a little case for it. It's got these standoffs that it comes with, which is nice. Um, and I'll throw it in a little 3D printed case, I think. And I think I'll do um, sort of social media notifier stuff. So maybe notify, I'm not sure. I'm definitely gonna put the sub counter on here and I'm gonna make it battery powered. So it should be able to run from two AA cells and um, we'll have the ESP8266 go into deep sleep um, and then turn this display or refresh the display something like every 10 minutes. And so it should last a long time and we'll test it out. So anyway, that's it. I'll speak to you all soon.